Nothing better than eating a raspberry straight from the plot. These yellow ones are fantastic, yellow antwerp. My onions have turned up. I've got some red ones here called electric. Also, my shallots have turned up. And what else have I got? Radar, some more onion sets. These are the, the golden onions. And what are the other two? Oh, the smell of them, it's gorgeous. These are some more onion sets called Snowball. And finally, some shallots. So I'll be planting these over the next few weeks. I actually think it's a bit too warm at the moment to be putting them in. So I'll put them in in the next few weeks and they will be ready to harvest around about June time next year. But nothing better than just enjoying this nice weather with some raspberries. Beautiful. So the first thing I like to do is to examine the bulbs. Get the bulbs all out. And just check them. If you buy them from a good quality merchant, then they should be all perfect. But nobody is perfect. You know, there might be just one or two that are a bit. So what I'm looking for is any that are moldy or a bit too soft. So just give them a squeeze and I'll put them into a pot so that I can keep the, all the varieties together. Didn't have to be too precise about it, just give them a gentle squeeze. And as you can see, all these are very nice indeed. I have found over the years, don't be fooled by size. You might think the big ones will produce a big bulb at the end. But sometimes it's the tiniest set that gives the biggest bulbs. So I'll just pop them all in a pot. I will write on the side of the pot what the label is, what the variety is, so I don't lose them. And then I will move on to the next one. Well, here's a little interesting bit of information for us. This is Hannah Dads. Apparently she was the first London underground female tube driver. There you should go. Bit of information there if you want to pause the screen and read it. to East London because I want to pick up a book and it's much easier just to come and buy it from an independent bookshop. So I'm heading to Newham Bookshop because the book is written by a friend of the channel John Rogers. Now John did a book a few years ago called This Other London and I will link to that below. He also has a YouTube channel of his walks around London and even different parts of the world but he's got a new book out called Welcome to New London. So I'm going to head to the bookshop, buy it, and start to read it as soon as I get on the train to go home. This is all I've come up from. I've, just, I've come all this way just to get a book, and then I'm going back home. I was going to go to Epping Forest, but it's one of those days where you've got to do things in the house, like clean clothes and clean up. So I'm going to head straight back. But first of all, let's find Newham Bookshop.
I'm at the allotment as you can see and we've had the AGM this morning so I'm not going to stay around for long I'm quite exhausted to be honest all that thinking but a box has turned up there you go Farmer Gracie and uh, would you believe it out of everything that I ordered the one thing that I really wanted was the one thing that they didn't have so I need to check to make sure that they haven't charged me for it so I thought I would leave the box until I got down here because I wanted to film it so they give you all these uh, postcards which I think is a bit of a waste of paper if you ask me uh, also some information cards how to grow the stuff that I've bought I got a free bag as well that's quite good now what I could do is I could sit here and show you a lot of bags and the varieties of things that I'm going to grow but there's no point because look there's quite a quite a few of them I think there's about about 120 pounds worth and what I've done this year different from what I would normally do I would normally do things like buy 50 bulbs of the same thing this year I have bought the bare minimum but I've bought more varieties such as tit a tit and a bag of a waterman a bag of minnow that's a really nice one but I've got far more bags but more varieties of less bulbs and I've tried to go for ones that have a scent so what I'm going to do is rather than just sit here and show you the things I've put a list of these onto my blog so go over to seanjamescameron.com and there'll be a list of everything that I'm growing and if I can find the pictures I'll also include the pictures because there's no point just looking at a list of names now it's a bit muggy and I'm a bit tired from that AGM to be honest we had a bit of cake so that's made me exhausted but I'm going to talk about diet maybe later on in this video in, or in a future video but I think it's time to stop messing around and just grab it by the horns and deal with it and that's what I'm going to do right I'll catch up with you in the next bit Well, it's come to that time of year now. Time to take the structures down and store the canes in the shed so we can get another year out of them because otherwise if you leave them outdoors during the winter they will become brittle and then you'll go and use them next year and they'll fall apart. Now for some people this is the end of the year but for me I think October and throughout the whole of the autumn is actually the start of the new year when we put in onions and the shallots will be going in soon so I believe that if you work hard during the autumn and winter and into the spring then you give yourself the freedom to enjoy the summer obviously there's still things to do during the summer such as weeding and watering the two w's weeding and watering but on the whole if you can put your head down during this time of year then you can get ahead time for next year Plus, there's nothing more satisfying than being sat in a shed on a cold winter's day with a nice cup of tea. Just stack them there for the time being. I want to get all the bindweed off before I move it into the shed. There are a few beans here which I will put into the shed and dry them off and see if I can save some seed from them. I'm not going to buy any seed over the next year because I have far too many 
when Wilco's closed down. If you remember, I had a bit of a splurge. So I've got plenty of seeds to get me through the next few years, to be honest. It certainly changes the dynamic of the garden when you pull down structures like this. It's actually quite a warm day today. It's a sort of mini heat wave is coming. And there we go. See, it's already changed the look and the feel of the garden as we go into the new the new cycle. Another thing that's coming out today is the sweet corn. It'll bring quite a bit of soil. So just shiggle that. We don't want to put good soil onto the compost bin to keep it. Do you know, I've seen some plots where people have just taken things out from over the years. Just thrown that on the compost bin. And you can see their plot is about a foot shallower than everybody else's plot. It's because they've always taken the soil, you know, take a cabbage home, it's got a lump of soil on the end, and over, over the decades, the plot becomes smaller and smaller when it comes to the thickness of the soil. Had a very good year for corn this year. I'm very pleased with it. I'm very pleased that I managed to harvest before the rats and the foxes got to me, as they did to quite a few people on site. Completely destroyed the harvest. I knew somebody who built a cage around his sweet corn and it seemed to work really well. So if you do have a problem, maybe that is something to consider for, for next year. I've, I've left a cob here. I thought I'd had them all. Look at that. Beautiful, that's a meal there. Put that to one side. This variety of corn it's called Ambrose. It's done exceptionally well for me anyway. So it's another structure of the garden being pulled up. Now, if you thought yourself there's nothing I can grow during the winter, you'd be mistaken. There are broad beans, overwintering onions and shallots. But if you didn't want to put all that in, I would put in a green manure, which is a plant that will grow throughout the winter and in the spring you then cut it back and you turn it into the soil because it is better to have something growing rather than having exposed land. And if you were doing the no dig method I would be tempted to put some broad beans in. Because even if you don't want to eat them, you could pass them on to a friend. There's plenty of people these days who could do with the help. So think about, is there anything you can grow for the, a friend or a neighbor, rather than the land being empty? Because if the land is empty, the weeds will take hold.
There we go. Right, that's certainly made a difference now. All the structures are gone. And this is heading for the compost heap. On Friday afternoon, I decided to go for a walk in the countryside, and I've recently discovered this place. It's about 30 minutes from my house. And it was a beautiful day, and I decided just to go out, be in the countryside, peace and quiet, smell that fresh air. And I've been talking to my Patreons this week. If you didn't know, I have a Patreon account. And if you come over there and support the channel, you get a bit of behind-the-scenes action, as it were. So I'm just going to update you with what's been going on this week. On Monday, I w so last week I applied for a job. And on Monday, I had the interview. And as far as I'm aware, there's only six of us. I was the, the first one. And the length of the interview went on longer than scheduled so I'm taking that as a good sign at the end of the interview I was told that it would be good if I met the other directors of the company which then happened on Monday afternoon so I haven't heard back yet but so far I've got very high hopes of everything coming through now, if it does come through, it means that I will be busy on a full-time basis doing this job. So I will still continue with my videos, but there obviously won't be as many because I'll have to film them in my spare time, in my days off. And whether I will keep the allotments going is something which I will address when the time comes and I have to make that decision because there is a possibility a very strong possibility that I will move closer to my work which means giving up the allotments that I have at the moment but there will still be allotment content and gardening content moving forward but I just can't say too much about that at the moment. I don't want to jinx the process. So because I was a bit tied up in knots, wanting to, he wanting to hear back and wanting to just hit the ground running and to start the job, I decided to go out for a little stroll in the countryside. And like I said, to enjoy the peace and quiet. And I've recently discovered this field and it has a beautiful atmosphere to it. It is calming from the moment you walk into the field. And there is a positive vibe, a positive energy about this area. So that is what is going on at the moment. So I haven't been able to spend as much time on my own allotment as I normally would. And whether I am there in the coming weeks, nobody knows. I'm expecting a response either way sometime over the coming week. So fingers crossed because if it did come off it would be a dream come true and it would completely change my life for the better. So that is the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will catch up with you very soon, somewhere, wherever that may be. All the links are in the description below, especially for John Rogers' books, Go Off and Support John, and links to my Patreon, where I talk a bit more about what's going on in my life behind the scenes. Pop over there and support me there. 
So, thanks for all your support. Enjoy this beautiful weather that we're having at the moment in London. It's a bit of a mini heat wave for October. And I'll catch up with you very soon. So from me until then, bye for now.